Hi class, welcome to exercise 3D, rationalizing the denominator. And in the old book, it's actually exercise 3E. So this lesson, we're only gonna have one example, and that's example nine, rationalizing the denominator. Now, despite there only being one example, there's actually quite a bit of pre-learning. So for this example, the pre-learning in the new book is questions one, two, four, five, and six. And for the old book, it's questions six, seven, and eight. And as in our last few lessons, this lesson is just a simple extension of what we've already covered in this unit. This one has some important implications for trigonometry, Pythagoras, and other forms of geometric reasoning. Anyhow, with that, we best get on with the introduction. Let's begin this topic with four facts that I'm sure you already know. One, any number multiplied by one remains the same number. So for example, six times one is six, three to the power of 45 times one is three to the power of 45. The square root of pi times one is equal to the square root of pi and seven over 43 multiplied by one is equal to seven over 43. Even one times one equals one. Fact two, any number divided by itself equals one. So to use some familiar numbers, six divided by six equals one, three to the power of 45 divided by three to the power of 45 equals one, square root of pi divided by the square root of pi equals one, seven over 43 divided by seven over 43 also equals one. And yes, even one divided by one equals one. Fact three is a fraction times a fraction is... Okay, this is a sort of situation where algebra is a much better way of expressing ourselves. So that algebra is A over B times C over D equals AC over BD. All right, I admit I'm cheating here because I've forgotten what fourth rule I had in mind. But let's do some numerical examples anyhow. 15 over two times four over six equals 60 over 12, which is five when simplified. In fact, four is multiplying a square root of a number by the, that same square root of a number will bring us back the same number. So we can explain that with some algebra. The square root of x times the square root of x equals x. So an easy numeric example is the square root of four equals two. And subbing in these values, that means that the square root of four times the square root of four equals two times two. Which is equal to four. So far points 1 and 3 are old news and point 4 is something that we've covered already in this topic. But if we put all these facts together we can deal with a fraction that has a third in the denominator. Like y over the square root of x. And this is because the square root of x divided by the square root of x is equal to 1. Because any number divided by itself is equal to 1, right? Then y divided by the square root of x multiplied by the square root of x divided by the square root of x. Well, that's equal to y times the square root of x divided by the square root of x times the square root of x. And now we can simplify that to y times the square root of x all divided by x. So generally speaking, one divided by the square root of x is equal to the square root of x divided by x. So that is our takeaway rule. But seriously, why would we care about this? Well, later this year, we're going to take trigonometry to a new level and we're going to find out many things about sine and cos and circles. And we do this by using right angle triangles that have a hypotenuse of one. So when we use the right angle triangle that has 45 degrees in the other two angles, and we know the hypotenuse has a length of one, then the opposite and the adjacent side have to have the same length, which we'll call X. And by Pythagoras, which we'll cover again this year, the side lengths of these triangles are one divided by the square root of two. And if you remember that the hypotenuse times cos is equal to adjacent, and the hypotenuse times sine is equal to the opposite, this little fact here means that cos of 45 is equal to sine of 45, which is equal to one over the square root of two. We're then gonna relate this to graphs of the sine and cos function. Here is x equals 45, and we can see that both cos and sine have a value of somewhere close to 0.7. We're also going to relate it to circles. Cos is the x value of this point, and sine is the y value of this point. 
which you can see both of them are somewhere between 0.6 and 0.8. But we know for sure that that value is this 1 divided by the square root of 2. So you remember finding the square root of 8 on the number line was more difficult than finding the square root of 2. But what the heck is 1 divided by the square root of 2? Now we've seen on the graph that it's probably close to 0.7, but just like we turned root 8 into 2 times root 2, we can use what we have learnt today to get a better idea of 1 over root 2. So 1 divided by root 2 is equal to 1 divided by root 2 times root 2 on root 2, which when we multiply the denominators and the numerators equals root 2 on 2. So because we know that root 2 is approximately 1.414, that means that 1 over root 2 equal to root 2 over 2 is approximately 1.414 over 2. Um, and 1.4 over 2 is 0.7, and this becomes 0 0.707. And if we look at these graphs, that definitely fits in. All right, hopefully that didn't confuse you, and hopefully I was able to motivate you as why this is such an important skill to know. Anyhow, let's wrap up the introduction there and let's move on to the next section which has our only example and I'll see you there. Rationalising the denominator is for when we have a divided by the square root of x, we have an irrational number as a denominator. By multiplying it by the square root of x divided by the square root of x, we end up with a times the square root of x all divided by x, which gives us a rational denominator. So let's try example 9 where in part a, the fraction we're given is two divided by the square root of three. Now all I have to do is multiply this by the square root of three over the square root of three, and root three times root three becomes three, and two times root three becomes two times root three. So we're left with two times the square root of three over three. All right, that was fairly straightforward. Let's try part b, where the number is three times the square root of two, all divided by the square root of five. So once again, we multiply it by the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, which of course is the same number because we're just multiplying by 1, right? And so we end up with 3 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 5 all over 5. And knowing our rules for thirds, that becomes the square root of 10. So we end up with 3 times the square root of 10 all over 5. And we really can't simplify that any further. 3 and 5 have no common factors. That third is as simple as it gets. All right, let's try it once again in part C, where we've got two times the square root of seven all over five times the square root of two. So once again, we're just focusing on the denominator, right? So as a square root of two, so we need to multiply that by the square root of two. Okay, so they need to pair up. And of course we want to multiply it by one, so we haven't changed anything. So we need to put the square root of two on the top. All right, so the next step is two times the square root of two is two. And so we end up with 5 times 2 on the denominator, and 2 times the square root of 7 times the square root of 2. Let's just skip ahead and write that as the square root of 14. You should know that by now, okay? And we can cancel these 2's out as common factors. So now we're left with the square root of 14 over 5. And that's it. Even though it looked a little bit more complicated, there really is nothing else to it. Let's move on to our final example, part D. This one has the expression 1 minus the square root of 3, all divided by the square root of 3. Now at first glance this might seem a little complicated, but surely you remember using the distributive law for thirds, so let's just do the same thing again. We need to focus on the bottom, which has the square root of 3, so we're going to multiply this by root 3 over root 3. And our denominator will become 3, and our numerator will be root 3 times 1 minus root 3. All right, and to expand those brackets, we now get root three times one, which is just root three, and minus root three times root three is minus three, all divided by three. And with all those threes there, it's tempting to simplify that further, but there really is no point. All right, so they're the numeric examples we've got for you today, and that should be enough to get you started. Uh, at this point, pause the video and work on questions one, two, four, five, and six in the new book and questions six, seven, and eight in the old book. And then we'll come back and summarize this lesson. All right, well done. We got to the end of the lesson and technically this is the last lesson of the unit. However, there is a bonus class based on an exercise in the old textbook and is an extension of this lesson and is also covered in the enrichment section of this exercise. And this bonus lesson in combination with continued fractions will allow us to find out a lot more about the square root of two. 
So if you're interested, research continued fractions. And let's wrap it all up there. To be successful in this class, that means that you understand that a third multiplied by itself gives a whole number. Know that rationalizing the denominator refers to converting an irrational denominator to one that is rational. And finally, be able to rationalize the denominator. All right, so good luck with all that pre-learning and I'll see you next time. Bye.